so I'm one of the pre-kidney transplant coordinators at Stanford. Uh, my role is to help patients prepare for transplant, bring them to the point of transplant, and then we have a separate team of nurses who uh, help patients through the post-transplant period. I'm going to talk to you today, or hopefully um, answer some of the questions that were submitted to me about the following topics. Uh, so transplant candidacy, the transplant waiting list, approximate waiting times to receive a kidney transplant, and multiple listings. Uh, so first I'll talk about the transplant candidacy. The purpose of the, of, well, to become a transplant candidate, you have to go through an evaluation process. And the purpose of our evaluation process is to assess whether or not uh, the benefits of transplant are going to outweigh the potential risks of putting you through a kidney transplant surgery. Um, to make this assessment, you review your history, so basically your medical history, your psychosocial history, um, to make sure that you're healthy enough and strong enough to undergo the stress of the transplant surgery. And um, as Kathy mentioned, social support is vital uh, to be able to have a successful transplant. So we're going to want to make sure that you have the support team in place to help you take care of this new kidney after transplant and that you will be able to take care of this new kidney after transplant. So once we've made the assessment um, that we feel that you can successfully go through transplant, we accept you as a candidate. Uh, but accepting you as a candidate doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a transplant tomorrow or that it guarantees that you will get a kidney transplant. Um, what it does is allows us to place your name on the kidney transplant waiting, waiting list so you can start accumulating waiting time. Um, accumulating waiting time is the really uh, most essential uh, factor that determines when you're going to get a transplant. You basically have to wait your turn, your turn until you're at the front of the line to get a kidney transplant. This rule is unique to our region, so um, Kathy uh, is here representing the California Transplant Donor Network, which consists of three transplant hospitals, Stanford Hospital, uh, UCSF in San Francisco, and California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco. So all three hospitals, all the patients at these three hospitals are waiting in line together. So there's one list that covers um, our region. So once you're on the list and accumulating waiting time, when are you actually ready to receive a kidney transplant? Uh, so we've done the initial assessment, but before we actually put you through a transplant sur surgery, we're going to want to um, check your systems, or that's the way I'm going to refer to it. We basically want to make sure that we have checked these areas. Um, medically, that you're physically um, strong enough and healthy enough to undergo a transplant surgery. Psychosocially, uh, that you'll be able to take care of this new kidney transplant. And uh, also, as part of the system's check, we'll need to make sure that you have adequate insurance coverage. Um, because you will need to take immunosuppressive medications after your transplant, which prevent you from rejecting your kidney. And you'll need to take those for as long as that kidney is going to work for you, uh, which can be many, many years. And so we want to make sure that you're going to be able to uh, get the medications that you need after transplant. So as part of the systems check, medically, we may also ask you to do some additional testing that you did not do as part of your initial evaluation. So for example, we're always interested to know what the status of your heart is, uh, because when you go through transplant surgery, that does put um, stress on your heart. So we want to make sure uh, that it's going to function, uh, function properly and provide good blood flow to your kidney. Um, another test that we may ask you to do before we can completely clear you for transplant surgery is a test where we look at the blood vessels in your lower abdomen. Because these uh, are the blood vessels that we would need to use to, uh, to hook up to your new kidney transplant. You're receiving an organ, and that organ's going to need good blood supply. So we need to make sure that your body's going to be able to provide that good blood supply. Uh, so that's just an example of some of the tests or systems that we might need to check before we can completely clear you for transplant surgery. Once uh, we've been able to check off all three of these areas, then we can activate you on the list. So, so far you've been on the list and accumulating waiting time, um, but you're not yet eligible to receive a kidney transplant offer. That happens once we uh, 
change your status on the list to active. And there are only two statuses that you can be in on the list, inactive status or active status. Uh, but please note, this is very important, that in both statuses, you will always uh, be, be accumulating waiting time. So, um, you know, if at some point you are able to clear you for transplant surgery and your case is active, uh, but then, for example, you end up, uh, you know, having a knee injury and you need knee, uh, knee surgery, we would need to temporarily change your status to inactive while you have that surgery and re recover from it. Afterwards, we'll change your status back to active, which makes you eligible to receive kidney transplant offers. But throughout that whole period when you're inactive or active, you're always going to be accumulating waiting time. So the clock never stops ticking. So uh, when do you actually get to the point of receiving a kidney transplant offer? If you're listed and let's say a year later we're able to check off all your systems and activate you on the list, you're technically eligible to receive a kidney transplant offer. But in our region, since receiving a transplant is uh, most always based on waiting time, uh, these are the approximate waiting times to get to the top of the list. And um, one of the questions that was submitted was, well, you know, why is blood group O so much longer than the rest? And I don't know that I have uh, the answer, but I can guess at why that is. Uh, one reason is that blood group O is the most common blood type. So we have, uh, you know, the largest number of people waiting uh, for kidney transplants in that blood group. And the next question then is usually, well, but if you have, if blood type O is the most common blood type, then shouldn't that also have the greatest number of donors? Um, and I don't know that I can answer that question. I think in general, all of these waiting times are created because of the difference between the uh, number of people who need transplant and then the number of donors that we're getting. Okay, so um, when you're on the list, one of the most common questions is, well, when am I going to get a transplant? And besides looking at uh, these numbers, which are averages of how long it's taken people, you know, in the past couple of years to get a transplant. Besides that uh, source of information, what I also look at is a list of people in our region who are active on the list. So this only shows people who have been completely cleared for transplant and are ready to receive a kidney transplant surgery. Um, and this list is provided to us every three months. Uh, so as you can see here, this is just a mock-up. Um, it will show the patients who are listed at our center. So of course, you know, we're not going to get information about patients listed at other transplant programs in the region. Uh, but it does, what's unique about this list is it does allow you to see where you are in relation to the other active people in the area. So um, in the second column, is the center where the patient belongs to. So CASF is University of California, San Francisco. Um, the ones highlighted in yellow are Stanford. And then CAPM is California Pacific Medical Center. Now, um, this list only gives you a uh, picture of the patients who are active on the list on a certain day. So it's constantly changing. There are people who are either getting transplanted and therefore kind of taken off this list, or there are patients who are becoming activated um, and may have had more waiting time than you and will now show up in front of you on the list. So I know this can get kind of confusing, but um, maybe if I give you an example, John Green, he's number seven on the list. If I was talking to John Green, I might tell him, yes, you're definitely uh, getting close to the top of the list, but as you can see, there are still candidates in front of him. And I might estimate that, uh, you know, it might be somewhere around three months to a year before you start getting transplant offers. Um, if I talk to John Green three months later when the list is published again, uh, it can happen where he's seven on the previous list, but maybe now he's 12, because there are five patients who have now been able to um, check off all their systems and are active on the list, and now will show up, whereas last month or three months ago they did not. Um, so it's really, uh, you're trying to, it is a moving target, and so uh, we just use it to help us estimate uh, approximate waiting times. Um, so hopefully that's 
answering some of the questions that I received about, you know, candidacy, the list, when you, when are you able to get a kidney transplant, and then uh, lastly, I just wanted to talk about uh, multiple listing. So you do have an option as a patient to be listed at more than one transplant program or in more than one transplant region, and um, I want to make sure that I kind of explain what that means. So this is a map of California, and the colored areas show uh, the California Transplant Donor Network region. And as I mentioned, there are three hospitals in this region. So all of our patients are waiting in line together uh, on this same list. If you're interested in trying to get on another list, then for example, the next closest region will be the whited out region in central uh, California. And that includes two transplant programs, both around uh, Sacramento, UC Davis, and then uh, Southern in Sacramento. The first step in trying to get on more than one transplant waiting list is to talk to your local nephrologist. So they can refer you to these other programs, and you will need to go through their evaluation process. Um, but uh, you know, if you're accepted as a candidate there, you can be listed there and also listed at Stanford. Um, so I know my portion was brief. Uh, but additionally, uh, resources that you have to kind of educate you about the transplant process are a couple of websites. So there's the ustransplant.org that gives you statistics on transplant outcomes at each individual transplant program in the country. So you can actually go to this, go to this website that will uh, show you a link to get to this database where you can look up each individual transplant program and look at their transplant outcomes. Um, that might be a good resource if you're interested in multiple listing. Uh, secondly here is the Stanford Kidney Transplant um, MP Grace website. We just revamped this and um, you know it can be a good source of information if you're interested in finding out what programs are unique to Stanford. So what do we offer uh, at Stanford that's kind of unique to us. And then of course please don't forget your transplant coordinator. So I'm one of the transplant coordinators at Stanford and all of you if uh, you know your evaluators will have a transplant coordinator assigned to you. Um, so we are here always to answer questions and if we can't answer them we'll try and help you get the answer. Um, I did bring some additional material which is uh, the back on the back table, on the back corner of the table. Uh, it's business cards for myself and Dr. Boos. Also, uh, there's pamphlets about the evaluation process, the living donor uh, process at Stanford, and uh, you know, pamphlets about multiple listing, and also about the expanded criteria donor program, which we didn't have time to touch on, but there is basic information about that for you on the back table. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.